All right, guys, we're back. This is part number three on the aileron servos uh, where the memory ran out. I was just in the process of putting some CA here where these screws are going to go back through. And we were just getting the, the glue on here. And I wanted to point something out to you, this black screw that's in here now. There's two different types if you get the same Emac servo. Can you guys see the difference? This one here One's a machine thread and one's not a machine thread. Be careful that you get the right part because if you sit there and try to screw in the wrong part you might get it and you'll ruin your servo. <clears throat> okay. But hopefully you won't run into that situation. That'd be a bummer. Okay. So now we're going to go ahead and uh, get this back together. So we got four screws here and uh, I want to find one that aligns really nicely first before I get all of them in there because that new material in there of course is gonna give us a little something to bite into but you don't want to have these things walk off their their holes you know I think it's happened on that first hole already. That would be annoying if it did. But you can see I don't see the hole there. Well, it sure looks like I'm lined up in the hole. Gosh, it's really hard to tell. Anyway, suppose I did screw it up, guys. This channel's not about how awesome I am. It's about watching successes and failures that I have. So I'm just a regular guy. And you can learn from my screw-ups as well as your own. And the people that you know that have success and failures, you can do the same from them, too. Of course. Life Lessons with Brian, the guy who fixes radio-controlled airplanes. I wonder if that qualifies as fake news. <laughs> Alright. I'm going to come back to that hole. It's giving me problems. I don't really... I don't remember having problems like this the last time. Maybe I need to run my drill back through. Now you can see why I picked that spot. <clears throat> because I got totally lucky <laughs> and it lined up. I just got a different screwdriver that'll reach in there better. As you guys can tell, I'm really working the screwdriver a lot harder to get the screws to penetrate the wood. Okay. Now, I had a little problem on this one, so I'm going to put a little glue on this screw. Okay. And I'm going to run 
run it in. And that's probably going to be a bear to get out later. But that's fine. That's not right now. In case you're wondering, that's a really good thread locker. And um, normally you don't use thread locker on a wood screw because that would be kind of dumb. All right, so there you have it, guys. Man, those CA bottles are just always falling all over themselves. Let's go ahead and fire up the radio system. Tresbit on, throttle cut. Plug in this meter for whatever reason. I still have the meter in the middle. Oh, that's good. I left that plugged in. Oh, yes. Now we look for problems, like excessive play. Okay, you can see we're not quite lined up with trim. So we could actually get that pre-trim done. Okay. So we get that trim done and then we can take and square these up just a little bit. That's all it takes. Guys, that's why I like those adjustments. Spoiler ons, lap rons. Of course I don't have them set to go out very far. Looks like we're pretty close on that inside edge. Almost like I'm rubbing the edge. I don't like it. Oh, now I gotta deal with this crap. Evidently I didn't have that screwed up. Uh, I didn't have that in the right position. So I'm gonna take this knife and I'm just gonna trim it. Trim it, trim it, and then I'm just going to take and back cut it, I'm just going to trim it a little teeny bit, and stuff's cutting easy at least, I don't know what this material is, but it's not hard to cut, okay, now I just need to, hmm, I could set the flap rounds. Okay, so I'll just go into my servos for a flap system. That'll get the servo out of the way while I do the work I need to do, which is just trimming this little slice of dice here. Ooh, that wasn't cool the way that worked. You'll notice it's not whining anymore. Listen to your servos, people. If your servos are whining, they're whining for a reason. Try your best to fix them, if it's possible. Yes. <clears throat> okay. On the next one, we're not going to make that same stupid mistake. Yippee! 
working. Okay, cool. Okay, throttle cut's still on, guys. So now the next thing is going to be to get the other side done, the same way we did this side. Now on this particular control surface, I don't have to cut this to make the maneuver um, effective, safe, and see there's there's not there's no risk of hitting. So I'm not really worried about damaging anything. Okay, so one thing I would like to consider looking at is this end down here. Seems like we're kind of touching it maybe at the bottom of the sweep there. So I'm gonna take and just open it up just a hair. Just a scotch. Okay. Run it to the other throw. The other extremity. Extreme. I'm just gonna open that up just a hair. Just a hair. Okay, so now we can go the other way. Yes. Yes. Perfect. It's perfect enough for me. Just gonna squeeze that just, 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 just a touch. Maybe just a touch more. Okay. Gorgeous. All right, cool. So now we duplicate that on the other side, and it's going to be the same procedure. We just got to be careful when we do our CA because I think I sort of did a crappy job on that, which is super frustrating. You know, you try to be careful and then you make a stupid mistake like that and it's unfortunate. But you know what? That's life. When you do this hobby, if you never take any risks, you're never going to discover anything new and exciting. Well, yeah, you will. <laughs> you just won't have to deal with the consequences of screwing up. <laughs> So, it's always better not to screw up. Okay, so let's go ahead and try to remember back 473 steps ago. How do we do this anyway? Oh yeah, that's right. I remember. First things first, you center your servo control arm. Which it looks like we might be centered. Let's see which way this one goes. They always seem to favor one way or another. That's pretty darn straight up. Now, of course, you could sub-trim this in your radio system. But you see, that's one position. Okay, so that's option A. Option B. <laughs> it's like, definitely not. There's no middle option, guys. So it's like, would you like crappy option A or horrible option B? Which one do you prefer? Crappy A or crappy B? I guess we'll, let's just think about this. I don't know if we're going to use spoiler rounds more often or if we're going to use ailerons more often. Or, I mean, uh, flap rounds more often because I'm not sure how this plane's going to respond to either. I guess this one, I, if I had to, if I had to, had to, had to pick, that'd be the side I would say has the better chance. That's the machine screw. So I'm going to go ahead and thread this in now. Okay, so that's in there now. So now let's go ahead and uh, just verifying triple checking. I have the hole closer to the aileron. I have the, coal, the hole outboard, meaning toward the winglet and away from the fuselage. Okay, let's score it. Alright, so guys, while I'm doing this amazing work, and you're watching, I'm just curious, what other channels do you guys like watching? 
I like watching Rammy. Rammy's good. Okay, now, I don't know if you guys can tell from your end, but I just got a warning about a low battery on my recording device. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to go ahead and get my tripod out and we'll come right back to you. All right, guys, so we got you plugged into the wall now. So basically, back in the old days, before I had my awesome helmet cam, which I have recently designed, I'm pretty sure it's like the 457th revision of that design, I used to always film on a tripod. And it was awesome except for all of the horrible side effects, like being trapped, constantly having to move things so that you could check that you were still in picture, running out of memory, and then 10 minutes later realizing you ran out of memory. <laughs> oh, life was so tough back then. But anyway, it's been a lot better ever since I switched over. I do it this way. And I don't know about you guys, but in my personal life, I'm not a big fan of change. If it's change for the better, I'm all for it. But it seems like change is usually for the worse. <laughs> um, okay, so we're going to take off some 3M double-sided tape. This stuff works pretty good so far. I've been happy with it. We're just going to line this up. Looks like we need to trim this side. Don't use your good scissors on this because it will tend to leave residue. And if you have residue on your scissors, they will cut very poorly. You can also clean your scissors with alcohol. I think I did that in one of my videos the other day. It was a pretty high intense visit. It was, it was a highly intense video, you know. Oh, so before I got interrupted by the low voltage warning, I was asking you guys what other channels you like to watch. I'm sure a lot of you watch Flight Test. They've kind of switched gears a lot lately, and I like the old stuff a little bit better. But they still do some really cool stuff. And they've had great success. They're like the forefathers of the RC YouTubers. Okay, so we've got the tape exposed, so I'm going to go ahead and pull this. I, I had taped this down just to ensure my positioning. And uh, remember how we, we really need to be careful to center this in both axes. And that would be this way, and then we want to make sure we don't touch the edge like we did on the other one. So I'm just going to give it a very soft, barely even squished it down. Just, just enough so that we can see how it throws back and forth. Okay, so now we're going to use our radio and we're going to sweep. Sweep. Okay, so we're hitting on that sweep. We're not hitting on that sweep. And we do appear to be pretty well centered. We're going to have to actually come back into the wing just a hair, which is fine because we did that on the other one, I think. Oops. Uh-oh. The double-sided tape is coming off funny. Cut it out, you. Okay, so that's too far out now. Guys, I can't tell if I failed miserably or what the deal is. You know what I didn't do? I didn't wipe it with alcohol. Dang it! I guess I'll cut a new piece after I do wipe it with alcohol. Alcohol. Wipe it down, baby. Get it clean. Clean jean. Now, while we have this thing out of the out of the hole, maybe we'll just open this up a little bit. Particularly on this end, it seemed a little jankety. I'm not sure why. This is like a 3D cut sort of CNC cutter was used to make this. It looks like kind of a cheap one. But that's fine. That's yeah, all fine. I'm not going to let that stop me from having an awesome plane. 
Okay, so we've got that cut. We've got it wiped down with alcohol. We'll wipe it again now that I'm done screwing around with it some more. We're going to cap this stuff off. We're going to cut a new piece of 3M tape. It's a little annoying to have to do that, but you know what? I'd rather waste a piece of 3M tape than crash a plane over some stupid detail like that. Always think about the consequence, the worst case scenario consequence of whatever choice you're making. And then decide if you can handle it. More life lessons from the guy who makes airplanes. Okay, here we go, guys. Yes! That is just phenomenal. It does feel like we have a little better purchase on there now. Which is great. I'm, I invite the opportunity to have better purchase. And we'll go ahead and peel up the backing and we'll try this whole thing again. Yes! Much better. Much better. Gosh, I didn't, uh, I didn't realize how important that was going to be. The whole alcohol wipe. Guess it's pretty important. Okay, so now, one other thing I just remember just using my memory bank is that this was real close to the end so I kinda line it up favoring it back just a hair so let's throw it in there loose just hold this loose okay and we'll just make sure our sweeps are clear yes getting on the top just a hair I can tolerate that because I can trim that out quite easily so I'm gonna go ahead and call it good but this time, while I've got it all exposed and easy to get to, I'm going to go ahead and take a little more material out. Okay. Now, if you guys were trying to do this real super neat, you could take a drill bit, put it in your drill, and you could try to cut it out that way. But this one's just not wanting to cooperate the way that the other one did. It'll be fine, it's just not going to be quite as perfect looking. Oh, it's a little annoying though. I'm a little bummed. I'm going to get a drill bit out. Out of my small kit here. Oh, by the way, don't ever make the mistake of magnetizing your drill bits. I think I did that on purpose, or excuse me, I sort of did it on accident. Um, I was uh, working on a project, I think I used a magnet to hold the drill bits in place just so I didn't have to chase them around, you know? Big mistake. Magnetized them all. Gorgeous. It's better. See? Now I'm going to do the same on this side, except I'm going to not go quite as, quite as far. Okay. Beautiful. I can live with that. Now we'll just switch our little micro drill bit back in there with tape on it to make it so that it's thick enough so that the drill can grab it. Okay, perfect. Now, when we move this aileron, oh yeah, not even a chance. Not going to hit. Okay, you remember on the other one we drilled holes, but then we added some material so we could thicken up and strengthen the pocket? Well, I think we're going to try to do the same. Um, I just had another amazing thought. This one we have treated as... We have treated this one as the aileron. So I'm just going to mark on the line aileron. And then on the other one we have aux one. So, of course, it's not going to want to mark with the darn which is kind of annoying. So I'm going to take a piece of tape and I'm going to write the word aileron on it. Take your tape, let it out like so. Stick the tape on something you can peel it up from, like the edge of this counter, and write 
and write on it aileron if the marker would mark it would help so much come on I think it's finally decided it's gonna start so aileron which is pretty obvious that this is an aileron that we're dealing with okay but this one's the aileron on the servo and the other one is going to be treated as the auxiliary one sometimes when you plug these things into a different channel the absolute positions will be a little bit different and when i say absolute positions i think you guys know what i mean but there's a, a certain like a home position sometimes when you plug in a servo to a different port uh, particularly with ailerons when they're configured as flaperons you will find that they go to a slightly different home position not a lot different okay so now that i've got that taped on there i know which one is actually the aileron okay and then the other one is actually going to be for us auxiliary one so you could label the other one auxiliary one if you wanted and i'm going to do that right now so aux one okay so aux one and then you'll just throw a little piece of tape over the top of it when you're done to keep the marking from getting wiped off easily I mean you can still wipe it off if you try at it but that's of course not our objective so now auxiliary one and aileron they're marked and uh, we'll be able to later plug those back in because these are the plugs that are going to actually get pulled out and plugged back in every time the wings are removed and I'll probably do a better label at some point, but that'll at least give us something to start with so we don't have to figure it out and try to reverse engineer it when it's too late and too difficult to tell what we're dealing with. Okay, so we've got our double-sided tape on there. Um, our sweep is good. Interestingly enough, we don't have as much of an issue with binding with the top of the wing, but we still want to trim this for symmetry reasons. Okay, so that trimmed off. I just cut a little further back that time just because I ended up using the knife last time. Okay, so now we can, um, we can move into our spot where we mark it. And then on this, on this side, since we already know kind of how things work, we don't have to probably wait. We'll just go ahead and get our gluing done right away. So I'm making my marks. Then we can evaluate where the marks are. It looks like our marks are going to be outside, outside the opening, which is what we want. Uh, the other thing, too, we can do is we can build up under there first instead of second, which does help a little bit in terms of getting material in there. Now, look at that servo. Does that look square to you? It doesn't look square to me. I wonder if I didn't get it quite square. Let's test. Let's look at the throw. That is not square, guys. It is not square. I screwed that up. Dang it. I'm just having a heck of a time with the servo. Let's see if it'll swivel. Probably won't. That thing is on there, like, solid. So, what I'm going to do now is, I guess... Option one is to do nothing and just try to spin it the little bit I need to spin it. And then option two, of course, would be to um, go ahead and peel it off altogether while marking coordinates of where I want things to end up. I think I'm going to go that route. I'm just, I've pulled it into the position where it's good. And I'm just making a couple of quick reference marks. I don't know if you guys can tell from the video, but it's uh, it's a little bit cockeyed. Not a lot cockeyed, it's a little bit cockeyed. So, that stinks. I'm going to fix it. It's annoying to have to do this stuff, but it's more annoying to fix it later. So now my objective is to remove this without damaging anything. So I'm going to go in here in the middle and I'm just going to slide very gently through. 
you don't want to slice and dice your own fingers, but you also don't want to damage the equipment. This tape was just applied today, and look how much effort it is to get it off. Now wait a couple of years and see how nasty that is. I guarantee it's going to split in half. But that does give me some level of confidence about the 3M tape. Look at that. That's crazy how strong that is. There is no way under normal circumstances that stuff would have come off. No way, guys. No possible way. You would have been crashing. All right, looks like we're out of time, guys. We're going to come right back to this. This will be uh, the end of part three on the aileron install for the ASH-26. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe.